All right. Welcome, 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 everyone. It is October 28th, 2020, and you're here at a very special community conversation here on this lovely Wednesday evening. Hope all are well out there in Athens land. Um, the first half of the show, we have with us the inimitable Timmy Conley. And then on the back end, we are going to have some conversation with um, several folks who work at the Board of Elections to talk about what's going on in that universe. But before we get to all that, we are in the alternate universe that is the Wild Rumpus. And lucky to be there with the, uh, the head guru, the major domo of the Wild Rumpus, Timmy Conley. Timmy, welcome. Thank you. So good to be here with you, Kelly. It's, Thank uh, you for it's inviting me on. Great to have you here. We're really excited about the work you've been doing. So tonight, uh, we'll talk a little bit with Timmy about the past, the present, and the future of the rumpus. Um, and Timmy, before we get to rumpus specifically, um, just a couple of questions. So Timmy, how did you cross paths with Athens? How, how did that happen? Um, interestingly enough, Kelly, uh, Next February is going to be the, my 30th anniversary of moving to Athens. So three decades. And I got here in a car in 1991. It, it was a, a, a brown Toyota Corolla with the floorboards rusted out of it mm. that my friends affectionately dubbed the cockroach. And I moved to Athens knowing one person with uh, everything I owned in the car and my futon strapped on the top. That's uh, that, that's that's a class act. Uh, some some <laughs> great friends of mine and I, uh, at, at another point in our existence, claimed that the only way to live was with little enough that you could fit it in your vehicle and move around with it. So, uh, so I, I applaud you for your entree. And um, you know, I ain't living right now. Then that's if that's the case. Like I ain't living anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you come to Athens, you mm -hmm. obviously um, could have gone anywhere, but you decided to stay and yep. make a creative life here. Um, talk a little bit about your, your first musical endeavors here in Athens. Well, I moved here thinking I would check out uh, Athens and then go check out Austin, Texas, but I ran out of money, so I stayed. And then I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, and, and you still can't afford Austin, just, just so we're clear. <laughs> yeah, affording Athens is getting a little more challenging, too, but we're going to work on that. In, in any case, um, yeah, I, I came here with my band Fuzzy Sprouts, and um, immediately, even in the first year, we did a Halloween show. And because I um, had had been doing those where I came, where I had just been, which was at UMass in Amherst, Massachusetts, mm. And we had some great Halloween parties up there. So I was an art major there, and I learned how to party, and I learned how to make art. So I, I guess that put me on a trajectory for the Wild Rumpus pretty solidly, especially um, considering the Halloween uh, component, which I always love. Just love. It's just about dressing up for me originally. But um, we played at Club Fred, which is a, a venue that was under uh, Fred de Toronto's Pizza on Baxter Street. And uh, people came to see the band that played first. They were called Loggerhead. And then the room emptied out for my band because we didn't know anybody. So I went downtown and I was covered with mud from Lake Herrick. That was my costume. And I thought I was a witch doctor, but a, a, a frat uh, brother called me Tarzan on crack. And I got kicked out of the grill. I, I, I would accept that as a compliment, Tarzan, on crack. And, uh, you know, and, and also I want to go back to an earlier statement you made. You said you learned how to party, and, and I appreciate that you cultivated the art of partying, that it just wasn't, uh, just wasn't a happenstance. It was an intentionality, the partying. Oh, so, yeah. Um, I, I, I first knew of you um, from Fuzzy Sprouts. I, mm -hmm. I, loved the, I loved the breadth of what Fuzzy Sprouts would do. You, you could be very straightforward loud and punk or you could be very sort of psychedelic and uh yeah. and, and that was impressive to me thanks we had a good time you know and we we had a great run and and uh, the music hasn't stopped never stopped making music ever since um fuzzy sprouts was 20 years ago then you know followed up with aqua love and trouble gum and kite to the moon and now wonderland rangers a band that 
is about to release our our second record and, and i couldn't be more proud and i couldn't love that band anymore so yeah we keep doing the music so so before we dive into um into rumpus one one last question how has it been just generally to, to be a creative artist in the midst of of this pandemic i mean have you have you found yourself digging deeper have you found yourself stymied what, what, what's that experience like for you um, I think when it hit, I was really scared. And so I was like, oh, my God, I better get busy. And I, I did immediately, I did two paintings that, that are both part of the Wild Rumpus this year. They're the unicorn paintings. And, um, and we got the band working on our recording with Shelter in Place. So we all got set up in our homes with recording gear and we've been do we've been doing that ever since because we didn't know if we could get together or not. So that's been great. It's been extremely creative time. That's yeah, great. I, I, miss, I miss people like crazy. I know we all are, you know. And uh, I hope to play some shows and 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 be with people soon. Well, so you, you talked about that early Fuzzy Sprout show being a Halloween event, and then mm -hmm. crazy 20 years after that full circle, you, you dream up what, what I thought of this as this great gorilla event in its early incarnation, Wild Rumpus, obviously with a storied name itself. Yeah. When did you say to yourself, you know, I want to make a happening, I want to make a thing out of you know, a, a day that I think in all of our Athens experience had always been a pretty cool day anyhow, but you, you decided, all right, we're going to take it next level. H how did that thought come to you? It was because I had been working with a dear friend, um, Daniel Pikin, to put out a solo record that I did. And that record was called Nerd Sexy. And um, Daniel was, and I were just brainstorming and he said like, you know, what can you do? Uh, how about a parade? And, I, and I, at first I said, no, no, I don't want to, you know, I think he said like a Timmy parade and I was like, that's no. But then I started thinking about it and um, I said, well, maybe a Halloween parade and um, tossed some ideas around and the wild rumpus just kind of came up as just being some, of course, of course, from the Mari Sendak book where the wild things are and something that has influenced, influenced, I'm sure my attitude in, in life in general <laughs> As you know, this this kid that takes a great adventure and comes back and still gets his hot meal, you know. Um, but uh, so the first year was 2009 and um, it was just real scattered of an effort. I think I just was very new to Facebook that year. So I maybe gave it a mention on Facebook and, and the Athens Banner Herald mentioned it. And we didn't have a permit, you know, we called it a film event. <laughs> and um, so we didn't need a permit. And it was raining that night. Mm -hmm. It was Halloween 2009 and it was raining and cold. And I was just really dejected. And about 30 minutes before you know, it was supposed to do, I dragged myself out of the house. And I said, I got to go down there, even if it's just me and some random person with a tuba. I got to go do it. I said I was going to do it. And then I went down there and there were hundreds of people. I was just blown away. So it was really something that was that Athens, it's really Athens that makes the wild rumpus, Kelly. There's no rumpus without us. It's just rump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and who wants just a, who wants a heap of rump? Nothing against rump, but uh, the rumpus really just took off. It was, it's just a, a beautiful thing like that. I never had expected it. And if you could have told me that 12 years later, I'd be doing it like, like I'm doing it, I, I'd be very surprised, you know, but I'm, I couldn't be prouder to be the person, you know, that puts it on. I and mean, there's a lot of wonderful people, you know, that have come in over the years and that are, that are my, my people and my team. And, uh, it's a collective effort at this point, for sure. And, and it, it is so inclusive. I think everybody feels embraced by Wild Rumpus. Um, you know, in, in, in the early years, I was not a parent. And now as a parent of an elementary age kid who looks forward to it every year, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it's just ever better to go down. And in recent years, um, we, we've stood on the bank parking lot 
or, or, or the bank sort of plaza just across the street from City Hall. That's kind of our regular post up uh, lately and just dance and uh, watch the festivities. And, um, and, and you do feel a spirit. I mean, and it is the spirit of the great people of this town that sort of fill that, uh, fill that street again and again and again. Um, as, as you have sort of gotten deeper into this, more production values, more activity, um, music on every corner, fire, lights. Has there been something that you weren't sure was going to come off well? And then, oh my heavens, it really did. And you were blown away at how great it was in reality, even, even beyond what your imagination would have offered. Is, is there something like that that you've seen? The um, the party at the end of the parade has just become just such a, an incredible, you know, blowout to me. You know, even after the first year where the parade was supposed to end at Tasty World the first year, and it did, even though I had been stopped by some sheriffs and was given a ticket, <laughs> and I didn't make it down to the Tasty World till later. But... Um, the, I, I knew from from year two that we needed something at the end of the parade. And so I think that dance party at the end, and it, it's just such a joyful rave. Um, and it has to do, you talk about the spirit of it. There's really something to me that's primal about it, about getting in costume and expressing a side of yourself that is... I don't know. That's just real joyful or exuberant, or you just let it free. That it just you just mm-hmm. let it free on that night, and it's just such an, a feeling of abandon. And um, some of the best times for me is to get all those lights and sound up and running, and um, the projectors have just been an incredible addition. And uh, and then just go and get in the dance party. And and even though I can't completely turn off, you know, uh, being in work mode for the night, you know, I do get some, I do get some moments where I'm just just in bliss, just dancing with all the people in all that color and in and, and rhythm and sound. It's just so cool and fun. Yeah, I, and I love the way you talk about the the abandon. Um, you know, you, you, you and I are men of a certain age and, uh, you know, there, there's this, th- there's this theory about, you know, you, you enter this period in your life and, you know, you, you become sort of narrowly defined. And I love the idea that, you know, the rumpus and, and to a great degree in my mind, Athens broadly sort of explode that notion and say, you know, we can be multifaceted. We can be, you know, I can wear a tie for part of my life and I can wear a toga in the street for part of my life. And and, and that's good and rewarding and fulfilling. That's a beautiful thought. Yeah. That's really special to hear. So, you know, here we are. It is 2020. Um, you know, you talked about how your individual creativity has thrived this year. You, you, you've been making music. You've been making visual art. Um, and, and I'm, I'm glad that you've been able to kind of enrich yourself in this time, but obviously we won't have the, the physical enrichment of the rumpus that we usually come to know and love on Halloween night. Um, so talk a little bit about your thinking as you've tried to figure out how to pivot this year. Um, it really came into focus. I think it was about back in July and I spent many months of sort of racking my brain and agonizing over what we could do or what we would be allowed to do or what would be safe to do. But then I realized when uh, somewhere back in July, I I think I said, oh, my God, you know, kids might not be able to trick or treat this year. So that's when it really kind of came clear that we would just do a rumpus in place. And um, in my life, I have quite a bit of experience having lived on the fringe, I guess, or having a lot of really creative artistic friends that we would just parade. I mean, we would get some tambourines and a kazoo and, and go or wigs, you know, and we would go like Michael Wagner's um, Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving parties. And we were like tromp around Boulevard and parade, you know? So it's um, to me, a parade can be five people. It can be one person. It could, Kelly, it could be a parade of one, 
like um, just get out and make some noise and there's going to be people in the streets and we can stay socially distanced. You know, wear a mask, be safe, parade in your home. Um, so I guess, you know, furthering that point, um, 2020 has been a year when we've all just seemed to have to dig deeper to reach the, um, to reach the well, you know, and we've had to make do with what we can do. So, uh, everybody has had to pivot to, to mm -hmm. do something. I'm feeling very fortunate that the wild rumpus is a mutable enough sort of fluid to be able to fit into a different format. So, uh, and then of course there's a bunch of online things that we're doing this year. We made a whole new channel like YouTube and Facebook live channel that, you know, on Halloween, we're going to be doing some great stuff and, we encourage people to tune in. It's going to be family friendly the whole way. And, uh, and I'm going to blow the conch shell and say, let the wild rumpus start at a certain point and people can go out and rumpus and then they can come back and uh, stream the DJ party. So know? who are, uh, who are some of the special guests in the online experience that, that we have to look forward to? Oh, I'm so excited. Um, so we have a rumpus show that I've been working with many different Athens filmmakers, probably six or seven different companies or people. To, and um, there's over 20 bands that have made videos for the Wild... It's the Wild Rumpus show. So it's on our channel and it's on our website, wildrumpus.org. It's going to start streaming. There's two showings. It's at 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock mm. on Halloween, Saturday Halloween. Um, it's about it's about 30 minutes long, maybe a little longer. So it, it's a special Halloween program that uh, has some amazing musical guests. We've got Cindy Wilson and Nolan wow. Bennett did a, a video for us. Pylon Reenactment Society. We've got the traditional high pollutant scallywags drum brigade doing a set from Dudley Park. Oh, mm -hmm. it, it just goes on and on and on and on. It, it's beautiful to see all the, the uh, musical acts and some theater troops too. Peepa Show and Moonlight Theater. We got Magic nice. Trick from Kevin O'Neill, um, some, just some beautiful stuff. And so after the second Rumpus show, we're going to take a break and say, all right, everybody go Rumpus. Like, do whatever you're going to do. Uh, outside, bang some pots and pans, wave to your friends across the street, and, uh, and go Rump. And at 8 p.m., there's going to be a group howl at the moon, okay? Mm. This is going to be pretty well offline, I'm hoping, at this point. So 8 p.m., just go outside. It's a full moon and howl at the moon. And you'll know that everybody who is, who's tune, tuning in to the rumpus energy will be howling. Uh, then we start the DJ uh, live stream from the Classic Center with the Booty Boys and DJ Starchild. And we're, we're, gonna, we're setting up in the atrium at the Classic Center, and we're going to roll live. Um, bringing the party into everybody's home from eight to eleven. That's great, and and a great assortment of uh, of rump shaken facilitators that you've lined up there for the party. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I, I will be howling from a location not very far from where I'm sitting now, and so I look forward great. to joining in. Um, I, I, I have been uh, fortunate to live in a place that really uh, embraces the parades and. Um, you, you never know when at noon or midnight uh, one just might pop up on Pulaski Street. So it's it's a good That's life. That's so cool. Live. So I um, have no idea where I'm going to be. I mm -hmm. could be anywhere. I'm not sure where I'll be yet. <laughs> but I know that we are also we're going to be set up on Boulevard at Heirloom Cafe selling T-shirts too. Excellent. It's going to be a socially distanced stand. So there'll be like cones out that people can line up and come and be touch free. So we'll have shirts for, uh, commemorating this year uh, from Ruby Sue Graphics and Old Guard Graphics. Uh, that's our longtime buddies that have printed stuff for us. And mm -hmm. they, they're going to be really neat. Yeah, so, so come by there if you want to pick up some stuff, too. And Bo that's of great. Boulevard is always All crazy. Right. Yeah, corner of Boulevard and Chase Street. Go get your rumpus mm -hmm. shirts. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that'll be the coup de grace in, uh, in the Halloween experience. I, you know, it's always great. Um, it was always great when I was a younger person and always great now as a parent when Halloween falls on a weekend. Uh, you know, it just it uh, it suits the experience. Yeah. Um, 
So, so Sending Timmy, love to all of our neighborhoods, though, I, you know, part of me wants to be everywhere. I want to be uh, in Forest Heights. I want to be in Nelly B. I want to be, you know, uh, in Cobham, wherever, you know, there's there's all these great neighborhoods all over town. And I, I, I want to be everywhere. Um, and I'm hoping what people will do is in what we're putting out there for people to do is to take photos and videos and go live and then share them with the Wild Rumpus hashtags. Mm. Um, so that we can reblog everybody's stuff as it's coming in, adding to that shared experience online. Yeah. So it's like, show us your rumpus, you know, like go live or photos and videos and hashtag wild rumpus. Wild rumpus. I, I, I like that idea of just this tapestry, this kaleidoscope of rumpus activity uh, for, from all around Athens and all around the globe, I'm sure. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's always one of the jokes that I think people make about Athens that, you know, people may go somewhere else, but invariably they're drawn back in. Mm -hmm. So Timmy, if, if you're looking down the road, um, yeah. are there some rumpus related experiences that you have been wanting to pull off that you've been dreaming about that you imagine coming to pass in a future year? Is, is there anything you can tantalize us with? Oh, wouldn't like George Clinton be great to have or the Flaming Lips, you know, for a big concert at the Classic Center or outdoors or something. You know, I, I definitely dream about this every year. I think, you know, first we got to get through this year and I, and I hope that what we've put out for people to enjoy will, will connect and, and be good and a, a joyful experience. Um, I'd, I'd love to make it more, uh, I'd love to integrate the Athens venues more and do more. We started last year really making it into a music festival. And uh, we had like seven music venues participate last year. And I, I really want to develop that as well and keep bringing people in from not just regionally, but nationally and internationally for the rumpus. I've, I've met people from all over the place at the Rumpus. You know, where are you from? We're from Arizona. Really? Oh, my God. So lucky that you're here. And it's the Rumpus. And people say, um, we came for this. I met people from Norway last year, you know, that, that came for the Rumpus. So, I mean, we want to keep building that. I, I mean, I'm not in a hurry with it. I, I'd rather it be stay cool and stay organic and stay local and freaky. And a big part of my heart that I put into it is that I don't ever want it to get cheesy and um, like like some things do, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, as long I, as I'm in charge, it won't. I, I have observed that every time there's a new component of it, it still feels authentic. It's still got soul. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's still got the necessary freak factor. <laughs> and that is going to continue to be true. Um, so uh, for the fine folks of the universe, um, where would you recommend they find more information about the Rumpus? We've talked about a lot of it here. Uh, where can folks go out there on the Internet? Um, let's see. The, first of all, the, our website, which is wildrumpus.org, is a great hub. And in fact, if you want to tune into the live stream, it's just right there on the homes, uh, the homes, the homepage of the website, just ready for a click. All right. Um, other than that, we're very active on our Facebook and Instagram. So, uh, and we just made a new YouTube channel. So, uh, if you search "Wild Rumpus Athens," you know, on Google, you're you're gonna find us. Um, Sweet. I may end up doing a, a Facebook group for next year just because of how Facebook um, pages have operated, it's been very difficult to get the word out on Facebook based on how their monetization thing works. Mm -hmm. um, so they, you know, they definitely ratchet down your posts uh, to, to, so you pay for exposure. So we have Timmy, to you, you, you just need to be from Russia and then it would be okay. You see, <laughs> uh, okay, we'll have to offshore it. next. There year. you go. All right. <laughs> Coming to you from Athens, not Serbia, not Russia. It is Timmy Conley of the wild rumpus. Check him out at wildrumpus.org and all those social media channels. 
Thank you so much, sir. I can't wait to see you out there in Rumpus Land. Um, for viewers, we're going to take a very short break, and we are going to be back with Charlotte Sosby and members of the election staff here in Athens, Georgia. Thanks again, Timmy. Thank you, Kelly. Have a great Halloween. Happy Halloween. All right, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome back to the second half of Community Conversation. Um, we thank uh, Timmy Conley for being here in the first half. And now we have the very great fortune of having um, Elections Department Director Charlotte Sosby with us, as well as poll worker Alice Eves. Uh, welcome to both of you. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank, thank you. you. So, um, Charlotte, I'm going to begin with you. Um, this is a year probably like no other in your life here in election land. Um, just so that everybody kind of has a baseline here. We're, um, we're having this conversation on Wednesday, the 28th, obviously, um, last day of what I think people are almost thinking of as election season is uh, November 3rd. That's election day, as we have historically known it. Um, uh, if you could let people know, how can they cast a ballot right now if they have not done so yet? So we have two days remaining, two days, Thursday and Friday. They can cast a ballot at any of our advanced voting locations and they can cast a ballot by absentee, make that request and make it fast because Friday is the last day for us to mail absentee ballots. Now, if you cast an absentee ballot, as long as you get that ballot back in our drop boxes by Tuesday at 7 p.m., that ballot will be counted. That also means that if you get it in the mail on Tuesday, you vote that ballot, put it in the drop box, it will be counted. As long as it's in the box by 7 p.m. So let's, uh, yeah. let, let's break down these two things just, just so everybody knows. Um, what are the early voting locations, the early in-person locations that we have available these next two days? So our early voting locations is our office, Board of Elections office on Washington Street from 8 to 5. And then the other locations are from 10 to 5, and that's our library, our Cooperative Extension office, Miriam Moore Community Center, the Tennis Center, and then ending tomorrow... I think tomorrow's Thursday. We've been working a lot. <laughs> tomorrow is Thursday. Yes, it's hard to figure out some days, but yes, tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah, so tomorrow from 10 to 5, UGA Stegman Coliseum will be available. And that will be the last day at that location. 
All right. And, and then um, which are the drop off centers if somebody has an absentee ballot and they want to slide it in the center? What are, what are those locations? So our drop box locations are here in our office, the elections office uh, on Washington Street, our library, our cooperative extension office, fire station number seven. We have one at our uh, transit multimodal location as well, our newest box in Winterville, City Hall. All right. So um, lots of opportunity. And then, of course, Tuesday the 3rd, Election Day. Um, you know, we we have our normal array of um, of polling places from uh, the far west side to to Winterville and everything in between. Um, yes. So lots of opportunity. Um, now, Alice, um, I, I think I heard you before we went live on the air. You are at Miriam Moore right now. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, I'm the manager there. Great. And and how long have you been doing uh, poll work? Uh, since two thousand six. So you uh, you've seen some years. I have, I have, and I even helped my dad years ago, back when it was everything was paper, and I watched him and my mother. So I helped years ago with him in Hart County. Oh, that's great! Absolutely, my wife grew up right next door in Elbert County, so yeah, okay. know, know the area well. Um, what, what what drew you to to doing poll work, Alice? Well, knowing Daddy did it. Uh, and then back in 2006, I was called and asked. I had retired from teaching in 2005. So uh, the fellow who was the manager out at Whit Davis called and asked what I like to do it. So I thought, why not? You know, I retired. I had the time. Uh, and I had done some previous. So I joined on as just as a clerk and worked for a clerk, clerk for a few years, then became an assistant manager and then manager. So I'm the manager at Whit Davis. And I was lucky enough to be asked to come to Miriam Moore and do the advanced voting. So I've enjoyed it. And so, of course, Alice, we're, we're using a new set of devices this year, the ballot marking devices, and then the scanner. Um, how have you found that interface for voters? Uh, people are real surprised at how easy it is. I've had many, many comment. Oh, wow. This is easy. A few need a little direction, but most are able to come right in and vote and and move on out. So it's been easy. Good, good. I, I'll share that um, I voted yesterday at Stegman Coliseum um, just because I wanted the novelty of voting where I take my son to see the Lady Dogs play. I thought that would be fun. And, um, and I'll say the staff was very helpful. Um, and, and a lot of new voters. Are, are you seeing that, Alice and Charlotte? Yes. Yes, we have a bell that we ring whenever we've got a first-time voter. So we've had probably, I'd say, six to ten first-time voters. That's great. Um, and, and Charlotte, uh, I mean, I understand that just in terms of the voter rolls here in athens Clark County, we've seen an enormous increase here in 2020. Can you talk a little bit numerically about where we were at the beginning of the, this year in terms of registered voters and where we are now? Yes, so earlier this year, we had about 73,000 active voters, and now we have 76,000 active voters, and, and total active, or total eligible voters, we've increased by at least 5,000 since the first of the year. That's great. Um, yeah. People are definitely excited. You can kind of feel it on the street. You can you can feel that energy. Um, is, uh, is, is there anything that... Um, that, that either of you want to make sure that, that people know when they come to the polls? Um, what, what do people need to have with them? They've got to have a driver's license or a picture ID. We have at least six forms of ID. So they need that uh, with them when they come. And other than that, just that's it. You okay. know, we, we can find them. And if we can't find them just right off in the system, we have ways that we can search. Sometimes, unfortunately, we do have voters who are out of county. They thought they had registered in Clark County, but I've not had anybody upset with me because I said, I'm sorry, you're in Green County. So they just know they need to drive to Green County. So, yeah, I, I had a couple of people who, who asked me, you know, at the early voting locations, can you vote from anywhere in the state? And I had to let them know, you know, you may work in Athens, but if you live in Elbert County, if you live in Greene County, if you live in Madison County, you need to vote in that county. Right, right. Uh, where, where you reside. Yeah, somebody asked that very question today. Could they vote anywhere? 
And I think they misunderstood when you say advanced voting anywhere that they thought, well, they could vote anywhere, but you have to be an athens Clark County resident and registered in our county. So they were very, you know, they understood. That's great. Um, so, uh, Charlotte, um, what um, y- you said, you know, somewhere in the ballpark, 76,000 registered voters. Now, how many people have voted as of today? As of today, we have had 34,000 825 voters cast ballots. That's 15,900 in absentee and 18,800 in advance. So that's about almost half of our registered voters that have cast ballots. And that's amazing. That's awesome. Wow. So we're nearing 50% of the registered voters having voted already um, here Wednesday, six days ahead of election day. And, and and how does this compare with say, you know, 2018 or 2016, Charlotte? So 2018, um, we had about 60% voter turnout, I believe it was. Um, we, we had about 43,000 voters that had cast ballots. And then 2016, we had uh, about 60, 63,000, close, pretty close to that. Um, well, and, uh, and, and if you compare the day of voters versus either the by mail, absentee, or advanced voters, how does that stack up compared to those prior years? Usually, um, so in our 2018 election, it was very close. Like advanced voting, we had 20,000 voters, and then on election day, we had 20,000 voters. But in 2016, we had 23,000 voters who had voted early, roughly 25,000, and then only 19,000 voted on election day. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking we will have. We are ranging anywhere from 28 to 30 percent in both areas. And I'm seeing that possibly we will have about 30 percent of our voters vote on election day, probably about 18,000 people. Um, But yeah, that's. That's kind of what we're going to look like. I believe election day is going to be kind of a breeze because everybody's voted already. And Alice, in your experience at Miriam Moore, um, what, what's the typical wait time been so far this week? Uh, no more than 10, 15 minutes max. We The first morning, Saturday morning, we had a line of maybe 15, maybe 20, but most of the time they'll, there comes, they and they always, it's like, like the grocery store. When one comes to vote, six come to vote, you know, but four to six at the most today in line. That's great. I, I was there right when Stegman opened yesterday, and I think there were about 25 people in line ahead of me. Maybe I got there 15 minutes before it opened, and maybe by the time I got into the Coliseum, uh, as I could kind of look behind me, maybe there were 25 or 30 behind me, and, and, and I think that line grew later in the morning, but I don't think it took me more than 35 minutes to vote over at Stegman Coliseum. Yeah, Saturday uh, morning, our line was about 30 minutes long. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, it didn't take more. It doesn't take that long. And people have been real surprised and real happy. Good. That's great. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, particularly when I think some people saw in metro areas like Atlanta, it could have been taking several hours. Um, and, and certainly those first couple of days of in-person voting, given that we just had sort of one, I guess, almost you could call it two locations, given that you had Board of Elections and adjacent City Hall uh, right next to each other. Um, th- this week, it does seem like it really has been a breeze. Uh, even downtown, as, as I come and go from my office where I'm sitting now, it doesn't seem like I've noticed anybody taking more than 15 or 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. So, um, uh, of course, everybody is wondering about, all right, what will it be like on election night? And, of course, you know, Charlotte, you'd worked in Hall County for a number of years, so you, you had seen some kind of changes over periods of time in terms of relationships between uh, local boards of election and the Secretary of State's office. Um, you know, in, in, in the past, it seemed like local counties in Georgia sort of owned their data maybe a little more fully uh, than is the case now. Charlotte, can you talk us through on election night, what happens both with those in-person early votes, what happens with the 
paper absentee ballots, and then what happens with the data from each of those traditional polling locations on that Tuesday. So, used to absentee ballot and advanced voting was its own precinct. But now, absentee and advanced dump into the precinct in which the voters are located. So, on election night, we will accumulate all of our ballot results or election results from all of our precincts. And then we will add all of our advanced voting votes into those results. And again, if you vote in 1A, that advanced voting vote total will go into 1A's basket. And then the same thing with absentee ballots. So on election night, as the poll managers bring in their uh, memory cards or their uh, the memory cards from their scanners, we will upload those onto our EMS server. And then we will upload advanced voting, uh, those totals from all of our locations. Those will also be added. And then once we're finished with adding our tabulating our absentee ballots, those will be added. And then our goal is to produce three results. Uh, and it would be a bulk of, of results. Uh, it might be the first six precincts. And the next one might be the next 10 precincts and then we'll do absentee and the remaining remaining precincts. So it won't be that we will publish any results like as it goes, but as we get a group, we will publish that. And those results will be, of course, transmitted to the Secretary of State's election night reporting portal. And that's where the results will be um, published. And um, we will also have that link on our website. Normally we have that there for our voters to be able to view as our results are coming in. But absentee ballots will probably be delayed a little bit. Hopefully we'll get done before midnight, but if not, it could go into the next day. Um, but our goal is to get it done and have it done on election night for sure. And of course, as the national press has covered differences from state to state to state, you know, one of the things that's been widely noted is that in Georgia, there is some pre-work that's allowed um, with those, you know, paper absentee ballots. Talk a little bit about just physically how those are managed in these days leading up to Election Day. Yes. So once an absentee ballot comes to our office, we give the person the voter credit for voting. So that, you know, the system knows that this person has voted. They won't need to get to vote again. Of course, we don't want anybody double voting here in Georgia. And then those ballots are in a safe place and stored, secured at our warehouse. And then the ballots are open. So we began opening envelopes on October the 22nd. And as of today, we have opened 13,800 ballots. Today, we started with our tabulation process, and all of this process brought, came about in a state election board rule that was just passed this year, allowing us to do those early processes. Can you imagine having that many ballots on election day and having to scan them? No, I, I feel for those states where you can't even begin to scan them until election day or after the polls close. That must be crazy. Yes. So we're already in the tabulation process, and part of that process requires us to have what we call a vote review panel. And so today was the first day that our vote review panel met. And that consists of two appointees from our judge, our superior court judge, one that's appointed as a designee for our board of elections, and then one for each party, Democratic and Republican Party. Those are appointed vote review panelists. And they come in and they watch the, the tabulation process. And then they also assist in what we call an adjudication process where the ballot is shown on a screen and it it helps with them making the decision on the intent of the voter. If there was an undermark, uh, overvote, uh, an office that was not voted out or a blank ballot, those are times that the, the vote review panel join in and making decisions on that process. And so, yes, the ballots are stored. They're collected in batches of 50 and, um, and labeled. And t they're touched by many people so from the point that the ballot is open to when it's tabulated and then when it's stored. Um, it's a lot of checking and balances on that process. 
And so uh, obviously lots of work. And then, you know, as you noted, sometimes there are these irregularities. You have somebody who marks two different names for the same office. Um, in that kind of case, uh, Charlotte, if, you know, if somebody should mark two different candidates for senator, um, is the whole ballot thrown out or is just that office invalidated on that form? Just that office. Okay, good, good. That's that's helpful, I think, for everybody to know. Um, Alice, we, of course, are talking about, you know, election night activity uh, at, at Whit Davis in the June balloting. H- how late were you over there at Whit Davis? Uh, not very late. We were out of there by, I'd say, 8, 8.30 because, um, of course, we can't start anything until 7 o'clock, but I have a super crew that I work with. And so we were able to get things shut down. The packing up probably takes longer, but I I have to keep track all day long of how many vote each hour and make sure my numbers are the same each hour. So that helps that I don't, you can't wait till the last minute and go, oh no, they don't mix, they don't match. So I'm very careful to make sure all day long and that helps in the closing down process. And these new machines are so much easier to close down. Really? Than the, the, the Diebold machines that you yes. use for mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, um, I think everybody is, uh, is, is, is pent up this year. There's no doubt. Um, people have been very excited. You've mentioned the numbers, this um, fantastic voter registration, this you know, really phenomenal turnout. Uh, I mean, it's, it's certainly looking like we'll probably have more people vote this year in this presidential cycle in Clark County than we've ever had in a presidential cycle. Um, and, you know, we owe both of you an enormous debt of gratitude for your efforts, for your diligence. Um, as Director Sesby mentioned, you know, we, we will be seeing probably in a few deliveries over the course of the very late night or the next day um, that information. Um, Alice, anything else you want to leave the folks with as, as they go into these last few days? Just come on over. I can get you in and out very quickly. All New- right. Yeah, the Miriam Moore Center just off the loop off Peter Street. Come That's, on right. Over. That's right. Great parking, you know, so it's a, it's a good place to come and vote. Charlotte, uh, what would you like to leave folks with? Just want to tell everybody, thank you. Clark County has represented this entire year. Um, to you members and your team of commissioners for your support, the city manager's office. And I'm going to tell you, after Clark County, entire government has had a part in this process. And I'm so thankful to be a part of Athens Clark County. And a big shout out to our poll workers and advanced voting workers like Mr. Allen mm-hmm. and, and the elections office team. I mean, I mean, just amazing. That's all I can say. And uh, we're looking forward to election day and hopefully Christmas we can all sit around and talk about how nice everything went. <laughs> I'd like to say one thing. After the last election, the bigger one, uh, I noticed on TV all of the chaos that went on around Atlanta. And I sent a note. I don't know if Charlotte remembers this or not, but I sent a note to Charlotte and Lisa and Pam saying how well they had prepared us because we were trained, well trained, and I think things in Athens Park County went very smoothly because of our training. And I have to say, thanks to them. Well, and, and we uh, we owe a great debt of gratitude to your professionalism in helping us exercise our democratic privilege uh, of the franchise. So um, to both of you, Alice, to Charlotte, uh, I know you need some rest. You've been at it. You've only got six days left. Um, m- much strength to both of you and um, to, uh, to our viewers out there. Um, you have Thursday and Friday to advance vote. Um, get in those absentee ballots, either in the mail ASAP or to the drop boxes that Charlotte mentioned earlier in the program. And then Tuesday, if you've not done either of those other options, you can vote at your regular polling place. So everybody be safe. Happy Halloween. And we'll see you next month. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you.